Hello everyone. Today I will tell you about the introduction of anatomy. Whenever you open your general anatomy book, you will find this first chapter, introduction of anatomy. Now what do you mean by the introduction of anatomy? When you will see the anatomy, you will find there are multiple divisions of the subject. There are multiple ways how to read this subject. What are the different terminologies we are going to see in this subject? And there is a long list of your systems, your different parts of the body, your different uh, terms related to the muscle, blood vessels, position, planes. So we'll discuss all these terms one by one. In today's lecture, I will discuss the first two part of this introduction. First is how to divide the anatomy, that is the subdivision of anatomy. And second, I will tell you about the anatomical terms related to the body position and different planes of your body. The remaining part we will discuss in the session which we will have after this first part. So let's discuss first subdivision of anatomy. Now whenever you are reading the anatomy, you can read the anatomy in multiple ways. First is the cadaveric anatomy. Now this is the most commonly seen way to read the anatomy. Now in this anatomy, we have the dead bodies. We preserve the dead bodies with the help of the chemicals like formalin and that process is known as embalming. So these cadavers are embalmed. Embalmed means we have done the process by injecting the formalin and other chemicals in the body with the major arteries. And once you will uh, uh, have the multiple chemical fluid in the body, it is going to preserve for a longer time. You can use the body multiple times for a longer period. That process is known as embalming and this embalmed bodies or the cadavers are going to dissect. So you are going to do the dissection on those cadavers or the preserved dead bodies and you are going to observe the different part of the body. So this is known as cadaveric anatomy. Now this cadaveric anatomy we learn with the naked eye and you can further divide into the two part. So we will learn the cadaver with the dividing it into the reason like upper limb, lower limb, abdomen, thorax, head and neck. So this is a regional anatomy or you can read or you can dissect the cadaver systematic wise. Now what are the system you will know? Like your skin integumentary system, skin and its appendages. You may dissect the whole uh, gastrointestinal first. So it is a GIT system. You can learn the reproductive system. You can learn your digestive system. So in the cadaveric anatomy, that means when you are dissecting the uh, embalmed dead bodies, you can read in two ways, either with the help of the different reason or in the term of different systems. Now the another way is living anatomy. It is not always to learn the anatomy on cadaver. You can learn the anatomy on in other ways also. That means you can learn anatomy on the living person also. So living anatomy is by the inspecting and palpating and examine a person. A living person you can examine, a living person you can inspect, you can auscultate, auscultate means with the help of a stethoscope, you can auscultate the living person. You can do the endoscopy, that means you will pass some kind of fiber optic instruments like uh, esophagoscope, like uh, your uh, other bronchoscope, then you will have radiography, you can do the uh, examination of the living body with the help of x-rays and electromyography and there are multiple ways how to study a living person. So one way is the dead body dissection that is cadaveric anatomy. One way is to study the anatomy on a living person that means living anatomy. Now there is a, another way is to understand the anatomy of a embryo. So prenatal development that means before birth in the womb of the mother if you are reading the anatomy then it is known as embryology or developmental anatomy. So anatomy is not meaning that we are always learning the anatomy of an adult person. You are also learning the anatomy of an embryo and this is known as developmental anatomy. Now this developmental anatomy is 
actually uh, teaching you about the evolution. So the development of tell history is called as ontogeny and the evolutionary part that means you are seeing the intermediate forms of the development is known as phylogeny. So you are always having this word ontogeny recapitulate the phylogeny or ontogeny repeats the phylogeny. What does it mean? That if you know, if you will see your kidneys, the kidneys are of three varieties, pronephric, mesonephric and metanephric. We are having metanephric kidney, but the lower animals are having pronephric kidney. Some will have mesonephric kidney. But when you will see the embryo of the human, the human embryo initially having the pronephric kidney, then our kidney convert into the mesonephric kidney and finally our kidney comes to the definitive kidney which is metanephric kidney. So you will find that during the embryology, our body passes through the different evolutionary phases. So ontogeny repeats phylogeny means that in the embryonic life, we pass through the different evolutionary phases in the embryo. Then there is another way to read anatomy is microscopic anatomy. That is known as histology where you are using the microscope and we will do the structural detail. That means you will see the cellular formation, you will see the different kind of tissues. So that is your microscopic anatomy. Then you will have the surface anatomy. Now this surface anatomy is very important part because this surface anatomy is helpful to apply your knowledge of anatomy on a living person. So when you will have the surface anatomy, which is also known as topographic anatomy, it is the study of the deeper part of your body in relation to the surface. On the surface, you will have the skin. For example, if I am having the idea that deep to this area, there is a presence of radial artery. So on the basis of this knowledge, I can palpate the radial artery. So I am palpating this radial artery on the surface. Why? I am able to do so because I am having the knowledge of the anatomy that there is a radial artery. In the same way, you have to know the different quadrants of abdomen. Now abdomen is divided into the nine quadrants and that is a surface anatomy. But in every quadrants, you are having a different abdominal organ. That is the your correlation of the knowledge of anatomy with surface anatomy. So surface anatomy give a very important idea to the clinical practitioners and surgical operation surgeons during the uh, surgeries, you should have the idea that what thing lies deep to this part of the body. So surface anatomy is basically a very important knowledge of your anatomy for your clinical practice. Then you will have the another way to study anatomy is with the help of the radiology and imaging. So when you will have the x-rays, when you will have the CT scan, when you will have the MRI scans, you are going to read the deeper structure, their relations and that is your uh, study with the help of your radiology. So here you are going to see the deeper parts, you are going to see the relations of the uh, study of the bones with the help of the x-rays, ultrasound, CT scan, MRI. So that is a radiological anatomy. Now you will have comparative anatomy. Now, as you know that there is a word is comparative. So we are comparing, we are comparing the human with the other animals. We are comparing the organs of human with the organs of other animals. So in this comparative anatomy, we are going to study the anatomy of other animals to explain the change in the form, structure and functions and morphology of different parts of the human body. How we develop, what is the role of tail in the uh, lower animals? We don't have the tail. Why we are having the four chamber heart? How our limbs develop because of the erect posture? What are the modification will take place? So these comparative anatomy give you the idea. And when you are comparing the uh, organs of animals and human, it will give you the idea that how the changes are taking place, what are the functional changes we require as a human, what are the important structural changes occurs in the organs of human as compared to the other animal. So when you are comparing the two species, human and other 
it is known as comparative anatomy then you will have physical anthropology now this word anthropology is the study of the physical characteristics of the human being and their ancestors now here we are actually reading the evolution of a human only so when you will have a study from ape to human so when we are discussing the detail from ape to human we are actually talking about your comparative anatomy so in this comparative anatomy we are seeing the ancestors and we are uh, reading the evolution in each and every organ every part of the body what are the changes taking place in our shoulder girdle pelvic girdle upper limb lower limb spine because our ancestors are not used to stand on the uh, foot they are having uh, the spine is their spine is not straight so how the evolution took place from our ancestors to a human today's modern human so it deals with the external feature and the measurements of the different races and group of the people now here we are not only discussing the uh, evolution from the ancestors that means ape to the human but we are also uh, studying the racial differences that means you are seeing the differences between the skull diameter of african and the indian if you are doing such kind of studies when you are comparing the races then it is again known as physical anthropology and it is a part of anatomy then you will have applied or clinical anatomy now applied or clinical anatomy is again the application of your anatomy knowledge so whatever you are reading in anatomy you should know how to apply on a patient so it deal with the application of your anatomical knowledge in your medical and surgical practice then lastly we will have experimental anatomy now this experimental anatomy is a study of the factors which influence and determine the form structure and functions of different part of the body but how so if you want to determine the form structure and function of different part of the body you have to do the experiments so experimental anatomy is a part of the research where we are doing the multiple research to find out the uh, different uh, part of this area and this is known as experimental anatomy the last is the genetics now genetics is also the part of anatomy because here we are going to study the information related to the chromosomes so in this way you will subdivide the anatomy in different areas now the another term comes is the position body position now body position most commonly of four type anatomical position supine and prone position and lithotomy position so first i will tell you about anatomical position now when you will see the anatomical position this anatomical position is important because is it will make the anatomy standardized universally there is a universal acceptance of all the terms and this is become the basic of your anatomy so whenever you are reading any book whenever you are reading any anatomy from uh, uh, any part of your world you will realize that everyone is following this position to uh, universally make a uniform terminologies in the anatomy so what is this position in this position the person has to stand straight so first is it is a standing position anatomy position where the person is straight the eyes are looking forward you are facing forward the eyes are looking forward the another important thing is that the arms are by the side of the body the arms are hanging by the side of the body but the palms are facing forward your this palmar surface is facing anteriorly it is not towards the body it is not posteriorly it is facing anteriorly so here you can see that palmar surface is facing anteriorly both the feet together and the when you will have the both the feet together your toes are facing forward so this whole is complete your anatomical position so what are the different parts of the anatomical position it is a straight position when you will have the straight position your eyes should be faces forward your arm should be by the side of the body your palm should be faces forward your both the feet together 
and toes are facing anteriorly. So this is your anatomical position. Now supine position. Now supine means when you lie down on the bed and your back is touching towards the bed, your this abdomen is facing anteriorly. So when the person is lie down on her back, now what is the another important component of this, uh, this position? In this, the arms are by the side, the palm facing upward. That means if I am lying down in this position, this is my anatomy position when the palm are facing anteriorly. In the same position if I will lie down, then it is known as supine position. So supine position is the lie down per person of your anatomical position. So the person who is having the straight uh, standing position, then it is anatomical position. But if the same person will lie down, then it is supine position. So in this supine position, your palm is now facing again anteriorly. You cannot keep your palm towards the bed. Your palm should be anteriorly. So the palms are facing upward, the feet again together, and this is your supine position. The only difference between the supine position and the anatomy position is that anatomy position is standing position, supine position is lying down position. Now prone position. Now in this position, you, you are lie down uh, on the bed with your chest and abdomen touching the your mattress. So person lying on her, his or her face, this is known as prone position. Then you will have lithotomy position. Now my dear students, this is a very special position and this lithotomy position is used to examine the genitalia. And at the time of the delivery also, the patient has to be under the lithotomy position. Now what is the lithotomy position? Now in this lithotomy position, when you will see your limbs, this is your thigh. So the thighs should be apart and there is a flexion occurs at the knee joint and you are having this view from the inferior side. Clear? So here is your genitalia. So you have to understand that this position is again a lie down position. But in this lie down position, the person is supine, not prone. The person is supine, but the position of lower limbs is not uh, same as the supine. In the supine, your lower limbs are straight. They are not straight. There is a flexion here on the hip. There is a flexion here at the knee and the thighs are apart from each other. Now this position is used to examine your genitalia and also at the time of the childbirth. So lithotomy position is again person lying on her back. That means he, is in, he or she is in supine position and the legs up and feet supported by the strap. Now why we are using the word strap because sometimes what will happen, you are having the two stands. One stand is supporting this leg and one stand is supporting this leg. So we'll tie the strap on both the side providing support. Otherwise, the most important concept of this position is to examine the genitalia. So if somebody will ask you which position is required for the uh, so examining of anal canal, vaginal canal, scrotal areas, then answer is lithotomy position. Then we'll talk about the planes of the body. Now when you will have the planes of the body, there are multiple planes. So first is the mid sagittal plane. So a plane passing through the center of the body, dividing it into the two equal right and left half. Now this is the important thing. The equal right and left half. Now this is my right side, this is my left side and if a plane is passing just along my tip of nose, then in the middle point of my sternum, through my navel or the umbilicus, this plane is dividing equally right half and the left half. So this position, which is anatomical, if I will draw a line, now this is dividing the body into the right equal half and left half. So this is known as mid sagittal plane. Now second is the sagittal plane. Now the plane which is parallel to the mid sagittal plane. That means again this plane is there. Now this plane is also dividing this body into the right side and left side. But now these two areas are not equal. If the plane is passing through the midline, 
then you will have mid sagittal plane but if a plane is passing parallel to this median plane still it is dividing the body into the left and right side but they are not equal they are not half but if the plane is passing through the midline then you will have equal half on right and left side so the plane which is vertical which is dividing the body vertically into the right and left but if they both are equal half then it is mid sagittal if they are unequal areas then it is sagittal another plane is coronal plane now coronal plane divides the body into the anterior and posterior part so if i will draw a line if i will cut the body into this part then you will have anterior and posterior part of the body so a plane which is right angle to the sagittal plane or median sagittal plane divides the body into the anterior and posterior half is coronal plane so what is the difference that this is my sagittal plane and this is my coronal plane so coronal and sagittal plane are right angle to each other and coronal plane divides the body into the anterior and posterior half while the mid sagittal plane divide into the right and left half clear so these are the very most commonly asked question and most common terms which we will see in anatomy what do you mean by the sagittal plane and what do you mean by the coronal plane so coronal plane is passing through the your side of the body in this way and it divide in anterior and posterior half while sagittal plane is a midline plane is mid sagittal and if you will have parallel to the mid sagittal then it is sagittal the next is transverse horizontal plane so you can divide the body into the upper and lower half so if i will divide this in such a way then you will have upper half and you will have lower half so a plane which is right angle to both sagittal and coronal so this is your coronal so it is making a right angle it is a sagittal again it is making a right angle so the plane which is right angle to the coronal as well as sagittal but it is horizontally placed and it is a transverse horizontal plane and this plane divides the body into the two half but they are upper and lower now oblique plane is other than the coronal transverse and sagittal that means if it is a plane then it is oblique if it is a plane it is oblique so you can have the three variety of planes mid sagittal plane coronal plane and horizontal plane but other than these three if you are having any plane it is oblique so oblique planes are not horizontal they are not straight vertical they are having some angle so that's why they are known as oblique now we'll have a very important term is what do you mean by the cardinal plane now when you will see the cardinal plane it is any plane which traverses the center of your body and it is called cardinal plane so what is the definition when it is passing through the center of body now see the word center comes that means it has to be in the mid part so suppose this is my center of the body then it has to be the center of in the median midline it has to be the center of my upper and lower half so suppose this is the center and through the center your horizontal plane is passing through the center your coronal plane is passing and through the same center your this plane is passing and that plane is your sagittal plane so suppose all the three planes are passing through this one point which is a center point of the body then that is a cardinal plane so what are the cardinal planes cardinal sagittal that is a mid sagittal plane cardinal transverse plane cardinal transverse plane means now this plane cannot be passed here cannot be passed here these all are transverse plane they all are transverse plane but this is cardinal transverse because it is passing through the center of the body these planes are not passing from the center of the body so they are not cardinal transverse plane they are transverse plane but they are not cardinal transverse plane and once you are using the word cardinal transverse plane it has to be divide this body into the equal upper half and lower half so you have to keep this thing in mind that cardinal transverse plane has to divide the body into the equal upper and lower half any plane which is horizontally placed 
is a transverse plane, but it is not cardinal because it is not passing through the center of body. In the same way, if we are using the word cardinal sagittal plane, then it has to be a mid sagittal plane because this plane has to pass through the center of body. In the same way, cardinal frontal or coronal plane divides the body into the equal anterior posterior half because it is again passing through the your center of the body. Now, what is fundamental position? Now, fundamental position is equal or same as anatomical position. It is again erect, the arms are hang by the side, the uh, both uh, feet are near to each other, but there is only one difference that the palmar surface is facing towards the body. That means these palms are not facing anteriorly, the palms are facing towards the body. So because the palms are facing towards the body, that's why this is not fulfilling the all criteria of your anatomical position and you are using the word fundamental position. So it is a comfortable position, it is not important for the anatomical point of view. Then you will have center of gravity. Now what do you mean by the center of gravity? Center of gravity is the point where the three cardinal plane intersect in the body is called as center of gravity. So I told you that there is a center point of the body where all the three planes, your mid sagittal, your uh, coronal plane and your horizontal transverse plane are meeting and that point of the meeting is known as center of your gravity, clear? So now in this first part of the terminologies of anatomy, we learn about the subdivisions of anatomy, we learn about the different planes of the anatomy and the important thing is that which is very commonly asked question about the different positions of anatomy. What do you mean by the anatomical position? What do you mean by the lithotomy position? What do you mean by the different planes like sagittal plane, mid sagittal plane, cardinal planes? So this is what you should have the basic idea about the introduction. So this is all for the session. Thank you.